the learning crisis is a teaching crisis, meaning teachers' poor pedagogical skills and content knowledge directly affect students. In-service teacher professional development programs have been shown to remedy this skills gap in teachers and subsequently improve student learning. The evidence tells us we need to support TPD that includes ongoing and individualized support to teachers. But what does this look like in practice? To get at this question, you'll have to determine who is best placed in the system to support teachers, how many teachers they can support to simultaneously maximize their time but not hamper program effectiveness, how often they need to visit teachers, and how long they need to observe and provide feedback for. The Structuring Effective One-to-One -one Support Technical Guidance Note attempts to answer these questions. To get at these answers, we analyzed 10 high-impact coaching programs that satisfied the inclusion criteria of being a K-12 coaching intervention in a low- or middle-income country that reported effects on student test scores and or teaching practices. Using the findings from these studies, our guidance note provides an overarching framework for how to structure one-to-one -one support within a TPD program. The note distinguishes highly structured and low structured support models. A highly structured support model uses structured teaching and coaching materials like teacher's guides. This model can be effective, but only if pedagogical leaders are provided with the materials training, and time to prioritize these tasks. These feedback sessions are relatively brief, making it possible for pedagogical leaders to support more teachers. A low structure support model, on the other hand, relies on pedagogical leaders who demonstrate deep expertise in content or pedagogy that they support teachers on. Here, the emphasis is not on monitoring teachers' implementation of guides, but instead providing more tailored support to teachers based on their pedagogical expertise. The deeper, more idiosyncratic feedback requires more time and bandwidth from pedagogical leaders to any individual teacher. One important thing to note, it's often the case that education systems with a limited supply of highly skilled pedagogical leaders start at the more highly structured end of the spectrum and move toward increasingly autonomous models. The note also emphasizes commonalities across programs, regardless of their structure. For instance, no matter the level of structured support involved, pedagogical leaders should not simultaneously support teachers and act as their evaluators, as this can both undermine trust and overwhelm inspectors. It's crucial for pedagogical leaders to visit teachers on an ongoing basis. Sustained duration is associated with stronger impacts on teacher practice and student learning because teachers have more opportunities to refine and apply their new practices in the classroom. Here, it's important to caveat, a high frequency of visits will only be effective if the quality of support is high. Next, pedagogical leaders should observe teachers for the length of their lesson, ranging from 30 to 60 minutes, and use a classroom observation tool to conduct observations. This full-length observation enables pedagogical leaders to understand the areas teachers need support in, at different points of the lesson. Given the new reality the COVID-19 pandemic has created, governments are keen to know if and how teachers can be supported remotely. As a starting point, the effectiveness of a remote model is conditional on resources, such as access to high-speed broadband internet, electricity, and technology. Based on limited evidence that we have from low- and middle-income countries, it's crucial for remote support programs to include an initial face-to-face -face interaction to build a trusting relationship between the pedagogical leader and their teacher. With these conditions in place, pedagogical leaders can provide remote support to teachers on a more frequent basis compared to in-person visits. This additional time is more feasible than with in-person sessions because travel is not an issue. Programs that focus on providing ongoing support to teachers must be embedded within a larger infrastructure where all components are aligned with improving teaching and learning for all. To be successful, these interventions must be supported by system-wide reforms, which draw a clear distinction between pedagogical leaders and inspectors, provide teachers with recognition tied to students' performance, and hold schools accountable for achieving learning goals. In conclusion, the goal of this guide is to provide explicit guidance for policymakers and World Bank project teams on how to structure the delivery of one-to-one -one support to teachers. 
we envision this guide being used to support project design and can also provide guidance to governments on how to structure an effective one-to-one -one support system.